Good morning, one and all, and uh, welcome to the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church here in Jamaica, St. Catherine. We want to thank God for all those who have joined us, those on the World Wide Web, our members in their homes, families, and friends. This is the place where the gospel and friendship meet, and this is a wonderful day. This is a brand new day and we give God honor and praise and glory for the opportunity that he's afforded us to be in his house in his presence and with his precious people Psalm 117 says oh praise the Lord all ye nations praise him all ye people for his merciful kindness is great towards us and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And we have much to give God thanks for. We have much to praise him for. And we're going to do this opening chorus. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all that you have done. Praise and glory be to God. Thanks. Hallelujah. Thanks, thanks. thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. Our souls are. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a great day. This is a wonderful day and we have come into his house another Lord's day. Hallelujah. We have come into his presence and we just want to tell him thanks. This is a great day and we serve a great big wonderful God can you put your hands together for our Lord hallelujah 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 welcome one and all and good morning again this is our communion service and we are coming to you from the greater Portmore open Bible Church 
in St. Catherine, Jamaica. And we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. Welcome to those who are in the house. The psalmist in Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. What a God! Hallelujah. And this morning, we're not going to leave here the same way we came, but we are going to leave here, whatever your situation is this morning, with a, a, a spirit of rejoicing and praise, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. So wherever you are this morning, I'm going to invite you to get your juice and your biscuit or your bread and prepare to Participate with us as we partake of the Lord's Supper a little later on in the service. I'm going to invite the praise team to come and they're going to be leading us in the singing of the great hymn of the church. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, Thou forever will be. We serve an unchanging God. And we are going to sing along wherever you are this morning. Maybe you're in your kitchen. Maybe you're in your bed. Maybe you're driving. Wherever you are, join us in singing the great hymn of the church. And after the hymn, our elder Carlton Brown will come to us with the intercessory prayer. God bless. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion.
Good morning, church. Good morning, each and every one, wherever you are this morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our Father. Could you please stand in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing that was made, that was made without Him making it. All things was made for His glory, for His honor, for His pleasure. The heaven declare His glory, and the firmament, the clear of his work of his mighty hand. We was crafted by his hand. We are his masterpiece, created in his own image and likeness. We were made to worship him. And we have come into his house this morning, gathering his name for one thing, for one purpose, to worship him. As we come before your presence this morning, Holy Spirit, we bow down to you. You were from time out of time. The pre-existing God, the God who continue to exist and has existed and will continue eternally. Worship is what you want from us and worship is what you will get this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, you are the great I am. 
the I am that I am, and there was none before you, beside you. None can measure up to you. You are the great, big, wonderful, awesome God. You speak things into being, and you created us. You crafted us with your hand because of your love for us. Lord, oh God, we have come back this morning to give back that which you have put into us. Your second commandment, to love one another and to love you, O oh God Almighty Father. We have come to worship you. We have come to bow down to you and to tell you thanks, O oh God, for all the things that you have done for us. Great is thy faithfulness unto us, Christ Jesus. Lord, we have sinned as an individual. We have sinned as a collective body of believers. We have sinned as a nation. But Lord, you said a contrite heart you will not despise. A repentive heart, oh God, you will not despise. So hear us this morning as I repent of my sin, known and unknown, the sins of our church and the churches of Jamaica and throughout the world and the sins of our country. Hear these praises from our grateful heart this morning, Lord Jesus, as I confess. We are not righteous, Lord God, but Jesus, your righteousness you have placed in us. Therefore, we walk by faith and not by sight. Lord Jesus, we repent. And Lord, we know you are merciful and you have heard and you have forgiven us of all our transgression on this morning, Communion Sunday. Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our heart this morning. We come to thank you, Lord, O oh God, Almighty Father, for all that you have done for us. We come to thank you, Lord, because you leave heaven and came to hurt. No man was able to make that sacrifice but you. Mankind sinned and not walk away from you, Christ Jesus. There was a barrier, a separation, O oh God. But you came back to bring unity, O oh God, Almighty Father. And as you prayed, in the garden of Gethsemane, the blood that you were about to use to cleanse us and to bring us back to restoration started falling from your brow. Drops of blood, oh God. And as you walk, and as they use those iron and nail and beat into your flesh, your blood began to sprue. It is the blood that cleanses. It is the blood that purifies. It is the blood that washes. Oh God, oh God, thank you for your blood. And when they lift you up and nail you to the cross, oh God Almighty Father, it was completed in you. You say it is finished. Lord, oh God, there are so many sickness and disease in the churches and in our nation. We are focusing upon the pandemic and what it has caused. But Lord, oh God, I pray that your people and Jamaica will turn their eyes not on the pandemic, but Lord, oh God, that they will turn their eyes upon Jesus. Glory to God as we see our redemption Draw it now. I pray that God people will draw closer to him in thanksgiving and loving him each day. It's a new day. And live each day. Live each day. Live each day as if it's your last day here on earth. Glory to God. Lord, I pray that your stripe that you have taken on the cross we heal the sick. We have those that have been hospitalized. 
those that are sick and are at home. We pray, O oh God Almighty Father, that you have done it and we have accepted it and we are taking it as so. We pray this morning for your word and for the person that will be delivering your word this morning. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit will rest upon him and that there will be a receptive art to hear your word, to digest it, and to apply it to our lives. Lord, we give you thanks for everything that the Holy Spirit will be doing in here this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, and let the church say, Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Elder Brown. What a wonderful thing to be free from sin and to have Christ within. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we are joined here with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to those who are just coming in. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God that he not only hears our prayers, but he answers our prayers. And we are so thankful that the needs are met this morning. And we want to give him praise, give him honor, and give him glory. Just give the Lord a wave this morning. Hallelujah. And we thank him for the rich presence here this morning. And we thank you, thank him for the great things that he has already done. And that he's going to do in and through us, mere mortal vessels oh god this morning you're going to use us for your honor and for your glory i'm going to invite again the praise team to come back and they're going to be leading us in a time of worship and praise and after that we'll have the welcome praise team and we're going to sing unto the lord sing as if it will be it's the last day in church it's your last day sing unto the lord hallelujah I'm going to invite us to stand. As you stand, begin to just raise your hands and to give the Lord some praise in the house this morning. Father, we worship you. Lord, we lift up your name. Truly, you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, we thank you for the blood this morning. We thank you for Mount Calvary. The Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Wherever you are in your homes, just begin to give God some worship. Hallelujah. The Bible said that God commendeth his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In the book of Revelation, Hallelujah. it says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. And so this morning we are going to declare that we are redeemed. Hallelujah. When our burden of sins was high, we were redeemed. Hallelujah. Redeemed. When my burden of sin was high. Redeemed. When my soul condemned to die. For oh, the price I could not pay, I owe. Hallelujah, redeem, redeem. When my burden of sin was high, redeem. When my soul condemned to die, redeem. Sin was high, redeemed. When my, my soul caught them to die, redeemed. For the price I could not pay, I owe. Hallelujah, redeemed. Sing, are you what? Say, are you what? In the blood, in the soul. Are you the 
white as snow Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Say, are you washed in the blood In the soul and the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you garments for this are white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul, blood of the Lamb. Oh, are your garments spotless? Are they white? Oh, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Sing there. And we thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. As the man of God prayed this morning, he mentioned the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, when he was praying, he said to his father, If it is thy will, let this cup pass from me. He never stopped there. He said, Nevertheless, not as I will, not my will, but let your will be done. 
and we thank God that Jesus became obedient to the cross even to his death on the cross and this morning that's why we're gonna sing above all powers above all kings hallelujah above all powers above all kings above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all kingdoms above all thrones above all thrones above all waters the world has ever Above all wealth, above all the wealth, and treasures of the earth, treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure. There's no way to measure what you were. Oh, 
Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. If God has been good to you, if woke you up this morning, put your hands together all across this place. Those who have joined us via the World Wide Web, it is a, let us just have a praise break. Could you just stand to your feet and just wave to Jesus? Just stand and give him a wave. Open up your mouth someplace, wherever you are, and say hallelujah to Jesus. We give him praise, we give him honor, we give him glory. There is none that is like unto him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together as we magnify the name of the Lord, our God, our Father and friend. We give him praise and honor and glory. You may be seated all across this place. There's a sweet spirit in this place this morning and it's traveling all across the airwaves those who are watching you're at the right place at the right time for a mighty move of almighty god is that an amen amen praise be to god let me say welcome to all those who have joined us this morning here at the greater portmore open bible church we welcome those who are here you know with us and those on the World Wide Web, we say welcome to you. And we want to welcome those, if you have joined us on the World Wide Web for the first time, we say welcome to you. You are at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church here in Jamaica, St. Catherine. And it is the place where the gospel and friendship meets. And we say welcome to you. We're happy to have you. Do we have anyone in-house in the center this morning? You're here for the first time worshiping with us. Could you indicate by an upraised hand any first time here this morning? All right, we have a first time. Could you stand? Could you stand? Please stand. Please give her a greater poem of open Bible welcome. We're happy, happy to have you. Please remain standing until you are attended to by one of our friendship persons. And if you have no church home, Mr. Music, hold. Thank you. If you have no church home of your own, you're certainly welcome to make this your home church. Really happy to have you worshiping with us this morning. Anyone celebrating a birthday today, recently, or you'll soon celebrate a birthday? Any birthday person in the house? All right, Sister Hines. All right, Sister Hines, Sister Reed, Brother Erskine. Please remain standing. All right, these are, and those online, please. Mr. Music, please play a happy birthday song for those who are celebrating.
Lord. Happy birthday, sisters Reed and Sister Hines and Brother Erskine. May the hand of God continue to bless you and to keep you as you live a rich and fruitful life. Do we have any personal persons celebrating wedding anniversary? Today is your wedding anniversary. You celebrated recently or you'll soon celebrate. All right, we have the stairs. Happy wedding anniversary, please. Oh, and the leaves. All right, so it's the stairs and the leaves. Mr. Music, take it away. Oh, where's Deacon Levy? Fourteen years of marriage for the stairs. Could you put your hands together for fourteen years of marriage? And for the Levis, for the Levis, it is twenty-two years of marriage. Could you put your hands together for twenty-two years? And if you are online celebrating, our prayers are with you as well. And may the hand of God continue to bless you and to keep your marriage. Do remember, we're here. Every Sunday morning, well, the time is now 7.30, you can join us at our worship service here on a Sunday morning. May the hand of God continue to bless us all as we continue to enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Deacon. Praise God. Thank you, Reverend Mark. Bless the Lord. As we continue with our morning worship service, our scripture reading comes to us from Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 14. And I'm going to invite our deacon, Merrick Wong, to come and lead us in the reading of the scripture. After the reading of the scripture, we're going to be having Deacon Giles coming to introduce our morning speaker and then an item from the members of the praise team. The Lord bless you. Scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 to 14. Please follow and in the King James Version, and could you stand up to honor the word of God, please? If you can stand. Thank you. And it reads, And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had, had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved and that raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained, ordained that we should walk in them. Verse 11. Wherefore remember that he bringing time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time he were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 14 and last. For he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. This is a portion of God's word that we honored by saying, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, earlier on, there was a comment that there's a sweet spirit inside this place. It is not only sweet, it is soothing, and I dare say, filling to our bodies and our souls. Isn't God marvelous this morning? This morning's speaker is someone known to most of us. He's married. He has a lovely wife. That union has produced three children. This morning's speaker has a passion for preaching the word. He's a praying man. He believes in fasting. And he has a word that the Lord has laid on his heart this morning. He is a certified marriage officer and he believes in marriage. So if by chance you're considering to be married or getting married, you're at the right place. He is a trained teacher and above all, he has earned that degree that every human being should strive to obtain. That be he born again. And that's the degree of all the degrees. If you have not heard anything else, believe in that one. But this person, you know, when we used to grow up and from the country, we used to talk about resident pastor. Because some pastors only visit maybe second, third, or first Sunday. But we have the privilege of having a resident pastor with us. One that we can call anytime, just like how we can call the Great Father. And I speak of none other than the Reverend Ewart McDonald. Please welcome him by saying hallelujah when he, you know, graced this lecture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. 
condemned. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Because you died and rose I'm forgiven I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted You were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Yes. Yeah. 
Savior, my King, would die for me. This is indeed a brand new day. It is an awesome moment, an awesome time. And we come expressing our gratitude to our God, our Father and friend. We're alive today, we're in the land of the living. And for that we are immensely grateful. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cruel cross while we were yet sinners. Could somebody put your hands together for Jesus? Let's put your hands together for the Lord. Praise be to God. The scripture reading this morning came to us from Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through to 14. And it was read earlier on, and I'm not going to read all of it. But I want to go to Ephesians chapter 1 just as a background for the message this morning. Ephesians chapter 1, I have the King James Version of the Bible. I'll read three verses from here. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And so we go back to the text right there later on. Um, chapter 2 and I'll read a few verses it says and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience and i uh, jump down to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where it he loved us, that when we were dead in sins, he had quickened us together with Christ, by grace are we saved. And I go down to verse 14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and I've broken down the middle wall. And you could underline that this, the middle wall of partition between us. This is a reading of a portion of God's holy word, and we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Shall we bow our heads and our hearts as we pray? Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for this time and Lord, this opportunity that you have afforded 
us today. And as I stand behind this sacred desk in front of your precious people, only a lump of clay, I pray there is Father that self will be slain and Christ will be seen and heard. Have your own sweet way, we pray thee, there is Father. We take authority over principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Every other thing and voice that would want to exalt itself at this moment, we declare and we command it to be subject to the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, O God. Lord, we pray that even as your word go forth with authority and clarity, that souls will be one for your kingdom, hearts will be touched, changed, and challenged, we pray thee. And Lord, we will be blessed as of coming here to look into your word. I commit this time to you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. And the precious people of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to use as a topic this morning, as I feel led of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace through Jesus Christ. Grace and peace through Jesus Christ. Paul, an apostle, and we see that in verse, in chapter 1, where it says, in, in, in Paul's introduction, Paul, an apostle, commissioned by Christ. And it, it, it tells us, you know, as we look on, Paul stresses his authority under God. And why do I say Paul stresses his authority under God? It, 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 it is introduced to us in chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle. Yes, that's what he says. And he was commissioned by Christ. But not only does Paul stress his, his authority under God to Jesus Christ, he also emphasizes God's sovereign plan and purpose for us. And where do we see Paul emphasizing God's sovereign plan and purpose for us? It is there, chapter 1, verse 2. Where it says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Paul uses the word grace throughout the book of Ephesians, they say, 12 times. He uses the word peace eight times in the book of Ephesians. And so, God's ultimate purpose and plan for lost humanity is that we will come into an experience of his grace and peace. And we cannot come into his grace, unmerited favor, without coming through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it's so it is to experience, one has to experience the grace by being at peace with God. So we can experience his peace. And God's plan and purpose for us is that we will find grace and peace through Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace. The is a merited favor. And Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. St. John 14, 27. And it, it, it even goes further by comparing the peace that the world offers. My peace I give unto you, Scripture says, not as the world give it. Because that which the world give it, it is temporary. It is temporal. And so it is the reason why people search for another high. Whether it is drug addiction, sex addiction, crime... Because some persons are searching for peace. But scripture is clear that if we are going to have true and lasting peace, it is through God and Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so on this communion Sunday, we want to look at three things. I want to leave three things with us. One, 
separation from God and Christ. Separation from God and Christ. Secondly, we want to look at sweet communion with the Savior. And thirdly, we want to look at the Savior's workmanship. Separation from God and Christ. And uh, the, the, text, the text tells us, and, and stay, stay, stay with me, you know, keep your Bibles open. Chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And you have a quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins. And we, we've read that a number of times, I believe. So let us just pause to look a little. Yes? And you have a quicken who were dead in trespasses and sin. What does it mean to be quickened? It is to be saved or to be made alive again. The other phrase, dead in trespasses and sin. What does that mean? You see, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, you can find it in Genesis chapter 3, they brought physical and spiritual death into God's perfect world. And so sin, that was the start because God had designed us to live in harmony with him, in happiness, in bliss, and to live forever with him. But man's disobedience caused a separation between man and God, or God and man. And so not only was physical death introduced into the equation, but there was also spiritual death. And that is why Hebrews 9, 27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die. And after death comes the judgment. Because sin had now changed the equation. Sin had now changed God's original intention and plan for you and I. Spiritual death was also introduced at this juncture in man's life. And so man being separated from God needed a savior. Sin, the Bible says, it was a wall of partition. It separated man from God. There was spiritual death. And so we move from, you know, man in, in a state where there is spiritual death to we see where the text tells us that he serves Satan, the prince and power of the air. Where do we see that? Look at the text. It says, we're in time past. He walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So watch this. Sin separates man from God. And as a result of that, man serve Satan. So outside of God and Christ, my friends, one is serving the devil. The devil is ruling over you. Outside of God and Christ, the devil is your ruler, the prince and power of the air. Who is the prince and power of the air in the text? Is Satan. And what does the devil do to those who he rules? What does the devil do to those who serve him? He puts up on them the spirit of disobedience. Yes, the spirit of disobedience will now work through separated man. Satan puts man into slavery. Sin enslaves us. And so we see the progression. We see man designed by God. But man's disobedience caused man to be separated from God. Separated from his ruler. And now Satan... The prince of the, of the air takes jurisdiction and rulership over man. 
And when man is serving the devil, the spirit of disobedience will work through separated man. And we see it in the text. It says, "What well, the power of the prince of the power of the air. Yes, no work at in the children of disobedience. And so when we see, you know, people often question, you know, the kind of heinous and brutal crimes that we see happening, not only here in Jamaica, but across the world. It is because man has come into, outside of God and Christ, man comes into slavery serving and being ruled by the prince of the air and so man's heart becomes disobedient yes and satan work it by his power in man to do wrong and to do evil and so man needs to be quickened man needs a savior what paul describes in verse two to three Paul describes the past moral and spiritual condition of the separated man. And I want to read it just for a reminder for us. Verse 2 to 3 of Ephesians chapter 2. It says, Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath as others. So when Paul here speaks about the conversation, he really described the past life of the sinner. And Paul not only described the past life of those who he writes to, for those who are listening to him, but Paul includes himself earlier on in the, in, in the Bible. Roma, he says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so when Paul wrote that, he was also speaking of his own life, that he too had a past life as a sinner when he was disobedient, when he was also serving the prince of the air, when he was also serving Satan. And so Paul was saying, in order for change to come, man has to be quickened. We need a savior. And so it is interesting. The past condition. We need grace. Grace and mercy is obtained through Jesus Christ. Grace and peace is obtained through Jesus Christ. So having been separated, lost man need to come back to be quickened to be saved or to be redeemed lost man need to come back into sweet communion with his savior his master and hear what the scripture says and so we see we see a change in verse 4 so we have described so far the past Yes, Paul spoke to our past, what we were living outside of God and Christ. And so sometimes we hear people say, well, I don't need to come to church. I don't necessarily have to serve the Lord. Yes, I mean, I pray and the Lord answer. And yes, the Lord has done some things for me. But I want to remind us that unless man comes to a point where his past is forgiven, where our past sins are thrown in the sea of forgetfulness, where we confess our sins to him and we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Man still lives in sin and condemnation. And so we need a savior. And so look at, look at the change that occurs in verse 4 of the text. But it says transition change but God who is rich in mercy for his great love where it he loved us that is what it says it says but God who is rich 
in mercy. His great love with he, which he loved us. And verse 5 goes on to say, Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us, hath he saved us together with Christ. And so how are we saved? It is by grace that we are saved. And to quicken us is to make us alive again. Is to bring us back into union with God and Christ. Is to move us from death and hell and destruction. And put us on a, at a place where we come into oneness. Where we receive the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. So by grace. Are we saved? And when you read the text further on, it says, By grace are we saved, lest any man should boast. So Paul brings us to a point of reflection. That is the life that I used to live outside of God and Christ, our ruler is the prince of the air. Who is the prince of the air? Satan. And some persons don't like the sound of that. They prefer a middle ground. They will say, well, I, I, they, they want to be in a situation where they are, they are churchy. They say, well, you know, I still go to church. And so they want to find a kind of middle ground where they, you know, they are churchy. And they say, well, I, am st I still go to church. I, I am church. I am religious. I, I, I am not so worldly. I am, I am, I am in the middle. Scripture speaks of, about a form of godliness. But denying the power of the shed blood and broken body of Jesus Christ. The efficacious blood that is able to wash us and to cleanse us from our sins. You can't be, have one form foot in and one foot out we have to commit and to go all the way jesus christ our lord and savior and redeemer is calling somebody today say come sin separates man from god and the plan of the enemy is to destroy us but jesus christ our lord and savior wants to have sweet communion with somebody this morning is that an amen sweet communion and so how can that be so by grace are we saved he quickened us he made us alive christ gave his life and this matter of quickening how does it work christ gave his life his blood was shed as a payment for our sins and so we could have life and have life more abundantly crucified buried and he rose again ascended to heaven and today we're no longer lost we're no longer condemned but we are seated we've been raised with him and we are seated with god in heavenly places somebody put your hands together somebody put your hands together in celebration for our position in god and christ we're no longer lost and undone on our way to a christless eternity but today we celebrate our status our life in christ so the text i mean it shows us clearly a life outside of christ which is death and doom and destruction both physical death and spiritual death and then it comes the, the transition takes place in verse 4 but god who is rich in mercy and he would have had to be a god rich in mercy my god how many times he would have had to extend mercy to you and I how many times we would have failed God how many times we would have promised not to fail promise to be obedient promise God to study our Bible some more and to pray and to seek the mind of God but many times we do otherwise but we thank God that he is rich in mercy because had it not been a God that is rich in mercy and patient with us 
and once the best for us he would have given up on us maybe he would have wiped us out already but we thank god for this rich in mercy speaks of mercy that has the capacity to reach you wherever you are this this rich in mercy speak to a god who is able to extend this hand of love and mercy wherever you are over many times and his grace and mercy and peace will not run out yes and so for that you know we celebrate the god that we know and love and serve we have abundant life the crucified christ ascended and we are raised with him raised from a life of sinfulness raised from a life of waywardness raised from a life of wandering to where where it's the text says we are seated with him in heavenly places in the heavenly realms you know what that means in the text it is talking when he talks about seated in heavenly places seated in heavenly realms it, it is it, it it is a place that is beyond the natural it is a place where we get divine revelation from god almighty himself what a place to be seated seated in heavenly places with god and it tells us about jesus christ himself who is seated by the right hand of god making intercession for you and i so when we fall and fail we can still today experience his grace and his mercy and his peace and so it was not a one-off covenant it continues throughout our life once we live for jesus christ somebody put your hands together for the lord put your hands together for jesus we are seated seated in heavenly places but i want to i want to we must run on this 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 matter as we look on the separated life yes to sweet communion scripture tells us that one we're quickened we're saved by grace unmerited favor favor that we did not deserve but not only are we quickened we, we live a certain it speaks about the quantity of our life it is it is for it is it is life eternal in christ if you look at if you look at the quantity eternal life abundant life a hope beyond this hope yes a hope beyond the natural yes and so if you try to quantify it that is that is that is it eternal eternal we will live with him and reign with him if we remain obedient and serve him when he comes back for us we, we, we will live and experience eternal life forever and forever but i also looked on the quality of life quicken the quantity and the quality scripture says that we are hid in christ what does it mean to be hid in christ our identity has changed our identity is in christ we are seated in heavenly places we are come into union with god and christ he has brought us yes to that ex to, to, to this exalted and divine place where we can get revelation where we can hear the mind of almighty god the bible says the secret of the lord are revealed to those that are is all things are passed away and we can join with the songwriter that says i am a brand new man put your hands together as a brand new man a brand new woman in god and christ all things are passed away and so despite the difficulties despite the pandemic despite all that is happening we have a hope the brand new man with a brand new mind is seeing beyond the, pan the pandemonium and the pandemic because we have a lively hope in god and christ this communion sunday we can have sweet communion with our savior our status 
Paul spoke about the, the life, the past, but now on the other side, on this side, we've been made alive. And so we can have sweet communion. Why? We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And, 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 and when you read this text, it gives us, you know, a part of it tells us about our responsibility. A peculiar people that should show forth what? It should show forth our praises to him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Talk about difficulties. We have some challenges now when we have difficulties. Boy, I don't want to imagine what our lives would be like outside of God and Christ. We would still be in the darkness, not knowing where to go and what to do. But as a peculiar people, a chosen generation, we've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of God and Christ. And so today, as we gather around the communion table, we come accepting the invitation as a chosen generation, as a royal priest, not as sinless people, but we'll talk a little about his workmanship because he continues to work on us. But we can rejoice we can enjoy this place and this position where we are seated in heavenly places out of darkness into the marvelous light of jesus christ and so we have looked on separated man how did man become separated sin entered and so man was separated from god sweet communion we can come into sweet communion with him we've been quick on quantity how long can we experience this life this new life he offers us everlasting life and what kind of quality of life can we can we live what what, what kind of quality we're hid in christ our identity is in christ by grace are we saved and not by, by ourselves so no man can boast because had it been our own our own quickening our own deliverance you and i could not deliver ourselves from sin yes sin enslaves and puts us in bondage so it required a higher power to break the chains of sin it required the light of christ that shines in us and shines through us to put us in a place where we can have sweet communion with god and christ this morning and so as we come nearer to a close, we want to look at the Savior's workmanship in our lives. Talking about grace and peace through Jesus Christ. So we've established that grace, by grace are we saved. By God sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross, to wash away our sins, we've experienced unmerited favor. So it is true grace and not by our own works. But we continue in the Savior's workmanship. Yes, verse 10 in the text says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto God, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Workmanship. And you know, just by thinking about the word workmanship, yet it, 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 it could convey continuous work. Yes, and workmanship, if you think about it, it could also convey a work of art or a work in progress. Workmanship. The Greek word for this gives the idea of one of a work of art it also gives the idea or conveys the idea they say of poetry so you and i are uh, we are a work of art yes and so uh, under his workmanship when we read the text 
the three things that, 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 that it, it brings out. We, you and I, have been one, we've been prepared in advance to do good works and walk in victory. Why do I say that? It is in the text. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto what? Unto good works. To do good works. God has what? Before the text says, ordained it. So we were prepared in advance to do, yes? To do good works and walk in victory. And what is, what is the good works that we've been prepared to do? We've been prepared to share our faith. We've been prepared even as we prepare to gather around the communion table this morning. We are beneficiaries of the grace and mercy and peace of Almighty God. You and I have come into the peace of God because we have made peace with God by surrendering our hearts and life to him and so having experienced the peace of God having made peace with God it is our responsibility and duty to share our faith and experience with somebody we've been prepared in advance to do good works and to walk in victory secondly peace is promised Peace is promised. And why do I say peace is promised? If you go back to the text and look, look, look at it, verse 14, it says, For he is our peace, who had made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Peace is promised. What is the middle wall? And we know what that is. When the Bible speaks about the middle wall of partition, he has broken down the middle wall of partition by the blood of Jesus. Today is communion Sunday. We don't come a mourning the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, but we come celebrating his resurrection. We come celebrating that the veil of the temple was rented. And today, you and I, in olden days, it would take one year for people to travel far distances to go and it's only the high priest that could go in the holies of holies in fact if he went in the high priest had a certain garment and they had some bells around it they tied a rope on him lest when he went into the presence into the holies of holies if to make to, to make atonement to, to bring our sins to God he wasn't holy he would drop dead he couldn't go in there but the Bible tells us that the wall of partition has been broken down the veil of the temple has been rented so you and i no longer stay in the courtyard we don't no longer stay outside but god and christ through his shed blood gives us direct access to the very presence of almighty god we can come to god wherever we are and that access that presence it comes with us wherever we are so if we, if we're in our cars we can cry out to Jesus. We can have direct access to the presence of Almighty God. And outside of God and Christ, man will have no peace. The middle wall of partition is broken down. We are no longer foreigners, but we are covenant people, a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a set apart people. That's what scripture says. And so not only peace is promised to us in this time of pandemonium and pandemic and whatever we are facing. But you know, we have a lively hope beyond today, beyond all that is happening. We will have an experience it eternal peace with God and Christ if we remain faithful to him scripture is careful to remind us that one day the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and how it will happen it says that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain shall be caught up to meet him so we have at the promise of eternal 
eternal peace with God and Christ. So yes, my brothers and sisters, friends, there is grace and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The middle wall, the veiled temple has been rented. Salvation for all through Jesus Christ, be it the Gentiles, Jew, wherever you are, wherever you are. My peace I give to you. Prepared in advance to do good works. Peace is promised. And today, the peace that passes all understanding is still available. And we always read about the peace that passes all understanding. What is the peace that passes all understanding? It is the peace. God gives us the peace that we can have complete confidence in God's ability to meet our needs at any given time, at any given place, and for any given situation. It's a peace that passes all understanding. And that all understanding interprets what it means. It, it, is, it is a peace, it is a confidence that we have in God, that we see God in the capacity and in the way in possessing the ability to do anything for us. It, it, it goes beyond how he is able to do. When scripture says he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that which you are able to ask or even think. That scripture explains this other scripture that speaks about the peace. It is our limited and finite mind. Because when you look at some things, sometimes we wonder, is God really able to do that? But, but he is able to give us and to do for us a complete confidence. If we put our complete confidence in God Almighty to meet our needs for any given situation at any time. He can give us peace of mind if we are at peace with God. And so as we close this morning, my friends, sin separates man from God. And so outside of God and Christ, there's really no, I mean, we, we will not experience his, his peace. Yes, outside of God and Christ, separated man will be ruled by Satan, the prince of the air. And so it results in disobedience, disarray, disrespect, disease, all kinds of things. But when we come into sweet communion, will there be some challenges? Of course. But we can depend on our Savior in times of storms, in times of difficulties. All the time. He will give us the peace that passes all understanding. The peace beyond our own ability to believe and to look to him. The confidence in him. And so we can come into sweet communion today with him. And the Savior's workmanship is still in progress. God is still working on you and I. Is workmanship. Yes, we are a part of a process and he's still working it out for you and I. And for that, we are immensely grateful that we are a part of God's artistry. Yes, and you know, if you, if you know an artist, you know, they, 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 they using clay, they, they, they eat the clay, they, they, they put this part on, they use a chisel to move some things and then they put it back together and at the end of it, it they polish that, 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 that thing that they have made, that work of art and when they polish that work of art, it, it is so beautiful. Yes, if you've been to an art show, you see they put the work of art on display and that is what god is doing to you and is fashioning us yes jesus christ is working on us yes there's some things that is taking away from us and removing from us why because one day 
the Bible says he will present the church without spot, without wrinkles, we, as his glorious bride, as a bridegroom, he will present us to his father without spot, without wrinkles, he's working on you and I, so don't give up my friend, you and I, our work of art. Somebody put your hands together. That should make us feel excited. And so, yes, when the potter have some, you know, the, 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 the clay or the artwork might have some little blemish on it. He doesn't give up. He takes some clay and he fixes it and he polishes it until it can be presented as a masterpiece in God and Christ. His workmanship, work of art. And the poetry, yes, he is writing and has written the script. It is through him that we can experience grace and peace through Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever is happening to us today, Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith has already written the script for us the author and the finisher of our faith he knows the beginning of the book and he knows the end and so we can trust him on this journey the master potter that is making us shaping us into a work of art a masterpiece and in one day present us to our master and maker somebody praise the lord put your hands together for jesus amen amen brethren this morning as we go to the communion table as you watch this broadcast i don't know where you are or what state you're in but if you are in a separated state outside of God and Christ, where the wall of partition because of sin has separated you from God and Christ, that wall of partition can come down today. Things can change today. And you can, at the end of this message, enjoy sweet communion with God and Christ through Jesus Christ. And one day, look as the Savior will work on us, one day be presented as a masterpiece. Jesus Christ will present you and I one day as his masterpiece to his Father. If you are like that this morning as you watch this broadcast, you say, Pastor, I'm not a Christian. I'm separated from God and Christ. But I want to receive Jesus Christ in my heart and life. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and your heart with me. And I'm going to lead you into a simple prayer. And if you pray this prayer in faith believing, you will no longer be separated from God and Christ. He will remove the wall of partition and invite you into his eternal presence. Pray this prayer after me if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I recognize that I am a sinner. And today I repent of all my sins. Today I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Lord Jesus, those who have prayed that prayer of repentance, we pray that you will bless them. We pray, O oh God, that you will reveal yourself to them in a mighty and mark way. And Lord, give them an appetite for the things of God and cause them to grow in your strength and grow in your word. We commit them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. The precious people of God say amen and amen. Put your hands together in celebration for somebody that has given their heart to Jesus. Somebody got saved this morning. Somebody gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Is there anyone in the house this morning? You pray that prayer and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Anybody here in church this morning? Pray the prayer and receive Jesus Christ. All right, we are all saved. And I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us as a part of God's workmanship, as a part of his masterpiece, as a part of his work of art. Tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. Let them know that that wall of partition can be removed 
so they can serve Jesus Christ and live for him. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. We're going to be heading to the communion table at this time. So those in your homes, prepare. Get some water or juice or biscuits if you have. You can use that. Or bread. And so those are symbols uh, representing the bread and wine. Amen. Amen. We're going to do this great song, Amazing Grace. Oh, sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me one day. Amazing grace. Hallelujah.
Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. Just lift up your voices just for a few seconds and give him a praise. We're in the land of the living. So many people have passed away. Just say something to Jesus. Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, we worship you. The wall of partition has been torn down. We have direct access to the throne room of God. We believe you today for a miracle. Hallelujah. Anybody believe in God for a miracle this morning? Just open up your mouth and claim your miracle. Lord God, we honor you today. Lord God, we magnify you. You have kept us from deaths and accidents. Lord God, there are people in the hospital that, Lord, they are battling for life. Lord God, but Lord, today you have brought us in your house. We are healthy. We are strong. We can move about. And even if we are sick, your healing anointing is in the house. We give you praise. We give you honor, we give you glory. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just sing that song. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. This morning it is we've gotten to a point where it's time for us to sup with the Lord. We are invited to come and to sup with Him. We should never run away. We should never run away from the communion table. But we should not come to the communion table with unconfessed sins. You know some persons they come to church and communion they disappear we should not run away from the table we should come to the table he has invited us to come to sup with him is the mirroring of that great mar marriage supper that will take place in heaven so we are mirroring something greater and something to come and there's an invitation extended to us we should not come with unconfessed sins though and, and certainly the communion ought not to be taken lightly it is reserved for those who are living for jesus christ who are serving the lord and so this morning as we've come to this juncture we're going to take the reading of the communion scripture at this time good morning church first corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 23 to 33 for I have received of the Lord that, that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which was broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Scripture says, let a man examine himself. Some fell sick because they partook unworthily. But not only does it say that some fell sick, it says some fell asleep. And that falling asleep is not sleep to come back to life. That falling asleep, some died. And so it says, let a man examine himself, personal. And so let us all bow our heads and our hearts at this time. As we, you know, just empty ourselves to Lord, open and bear. It says, let a man examine his own heart, himself. And so let's, let's just all take a few moments and just talk to Jesus Christ at this time. Lord, he said, let a man examine himself, and as we have all examined ourselves and have confessed our sins, you say, when we come to the table, we should tarry one for another. And so, Lord, we pray one for another. If we have hurt each other, said any wrong, wrong thought, any wrong action collectively, we now confess it. We pray thee, and we ask that you will wash us, forgive us, and wash us and cleanse us with your blood one more time. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Deacon Lewis, could you just ask God's blessing on the emblems, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Merciful Father, as we come before your presence this morning, I pray that you will search us, O oh God, and see if there is any wicked way in us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and create in us a clean heart. So God, as we gather here before your communion table, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless these emblems as we partake in your body and in your precious blood. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. His blood will carry me. Hallelujah. All the way. All the way. His blood will carry me. Yeah. 
Glory be to our God, our Father and Friend. Just raise, raise bread wherever you are in your homes. Whoever you have representing, just raise it to heaven and believe God for a miracle today. Somebody will experience a miracle today online in this building. Somebody will experience a miracle today. A scripture says, on the same night on which Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had broken it, he gave thanks. He said, this is my body which was broken for you. As often as ye eat, do so in remembrance of me. You may eat, eat ye all of it at this time. in faith believing we believe in God for a miracle somebody in this house will experience a miracle before you leave here this morning somebody online somebody seated somewhere watching this broadcast the hand of God will give you a miracle before this day is closed I speak a word to you I prophesy to you today yes and on the same night after the same manner he took the cup and when he had blessed it he stopped and said this is my the new testament of my blood which is shed for you as often as you drink it do so in remembrance of me you may drink drink it all of it at this time is unmerited favor it is now time to participate in worship in giving and those in your homes we ask you to gather your tithes your 
offering at this time. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us about a gift, if this ministry has been a blessing to you and your family, and you want to get in touch with us as to how you can bless the minister financially, you can reach us at 502-5059. That's 876-502-5059. Now that you have gathered your gifts, your tithes, and your offering, let us pray a prayer, a blessing over your life and the gift. Our Father and our God, as your people prepare to sow a seed in the fertile soil of kingdom building, dearest Father, I pray that you will bless the seed. And even as this seed is released, O oh God, you give seed to the sower. And even as we sow the seeds, our tithes, our offering, Lord God, I declare a release, a multiplication, hundredfold, thousandfold, open doors, sick bodies and minds will be healed, O oh God. I declare that uncommon favor will pursue and overtake your people, even as they give today. Bless the givers, bless the offering, bless this time, and those who don't have to give, bless them that they give another time. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And if you want to give electronically, then that information will be provided shortly. Mr. Music, give us a song, praise team. Ushers. He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. some reminders for this week and the notices are as follows please join us online for a, another wonderful service next Sunday morning at 7 30 a.m. and it will be our men's service amen
please come on out, ladies, please, uh, you know, invite your husband and encourage them to come on out next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And we're going to be having a special a, a guest speaker, all right? Bible studies on this Tuesday, October 5 at 8 p.m. And it will be a time of prayer. And it's via the Zoom platform. And the link the, is um, as follows. The ID 391-546-2597. The passcode is 408-673. And the link will also be shared in the church's WhatsApp group. And please remember to invite at least one person to log on. Youth meetings are on on Fridays at 7.30 p.m. and the link also will be shared. And please be reminded that on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. right here we have Mountain Movers per meeting. Sunday school is on this afternoon at 5 and the Zoom link will be shared. And Sunday school is for all ages. So I encourage the little ones, the big ones, everybody to come online this afternoon at 5 for Sunday school. The National MOV Retreat will be this month end, October 29 to 31. One of the speakers will be our own Reverend Michael Hammond, and this will be online. They'll also be having a, a concert, a virtual concert, during the weekend, and you can't afford to miss that men. And the ID is 865 8861 That's 865-994-88661. And the passcode is RETREAT, all caps. That's RETREAT. And the link will also be shared in the men's WhatsApp group, and I'm going to invite the men also to share it in the other group so that the ladies can also invite their husband, their brothers, and male relatives as well. Okay. Harvest Thanksgiving service is coming up in November. Please be, begin to pray about this special service and plan to support in whatever way and you'll hear more about that as time goes by also the women of work ministry will be having a, a takeout a breakfast a fundraising breakfast uh coming the end of october the last saturday in october and you'll hear more about that as well we encourage you to continue to support the church with your financial gifts, your tithes, your offering, your love gifts, and you can remit same via the online platform or the ABMs, and the account information, National Commercial Bank, University Branch, account number 401-094-431. That's account number, current account number 401 zero nine four four three one and we are asking you to mail the particulars to the church's office and if you maybe have your gifts you know each sunday morning you put away your gifts and you you don't you know have any way you're not nearby just call us call the office and we will we will make sure that it is collected the office numbers are 502-5059-622 Three four four four, and the office hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Fridays, 8:30 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. So call us, and we will ensure that your gifts are in the right place. Okay. I have a fair here. A couple, a Christian couple. They'll be hosting a couple's retreat, a weekend retreat, and it will be at the Baha'i Principal. hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's going to be December 10 to 12, and the theme is Rekindle, Marriage Still a Keep. And couples, the, the flyer will be on the notice board for those who are here, and you can call the office 
for more information. And as time goes by, we will give you some more information. That's December 10 to 12, a weekend retreat for couples. Please be reminded to pray for those who are not well and those who are bereaved. We continue to pray for our brother Errol Basco, who lost his wife or sister Desreen some weeks ago, and our sister Monica Deaconess Williams and brother Tyrone Smith. They lost their brother and also sister Patrice Groves. She lost a sister. Our brother Lenworth Gordon lost a sister as well and she's also the, that's the sister-in-law of sister Nordia Gordon all right remember to pray for these bereaved remember to pray for our sick our sister Joan White sister Claudette Blair sister Pelinda Palmer brother Amos Roden and we want us to pray especially for our sister Sharon Robinson at this time she had to go to the university hospital sometime yesterday evening for an emergency procedure so please remember to pray for her especially at this time and we would like to remind one and all those who are listening those who are here if you would like to come to service please remember that we are operating during the month of october on the special guidelines we have a special limit. The limit is 50. So please remember to call the, the office during the office time and secure your space. It's Sunday is a no movement day. So you will need to, to um, secure your space and collect your authorization letter for travel. This is very important. As a church, we must adhere to the guidelines issued by the government. And we thank you for your cooperation. God bless you richly. Have a great week. Thank you, Elegon. Could we stand at this time and do remember, do we were reminded, but do remember that 5 p.m. this afternoon, it is our Sunday school and it is an opportunity for evangelism. Yes, we are not going on the streets and crusades 10 crusades as we normally do but it's an opportunity for evangelism so please Sunday school is on 5 p.m. via zoom invite the neighbor the children in the community tell their parents send them the link and press and just come on so we can use this as a part of our evangelistic effort and thrust at this time and though we are facing a pandemic. Let's pray. Our oh, Father and our God, we thank you that you love us so much that even when we were separated, you were mindful of us to send your son Jesus Christ to die on a cruel cross, to shed his blood, to wash away our sins. And today we can enjoy sweet communion with our Savior. Lord, remind us, Lord, of our responsibility even as we go throughout this week, to share the love, to tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you have not done with us. We are a work of art. You are, you, you are working on us, O oh God. We are the Savior's workmanship. And you continue to work on us and to work out all things for your glory and for our good. Bless us as we go from here, O oh God. And Lord, we ask that you will cause your favor to just rest upon us. Every family represented here this morning on, on the platform watching, I pronounce favor, uncommon favor over all of us. And Lord, your blessings and your keeping care. We look to you and we lean upon you. We tell you thanks for every blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Raise your right hand for the blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friends. Thanks for coming. Those who are in the sanctuary, thanks to those who have joined.